what's going on everyone? My name is Malik Walters and I'm a third year dental student at Meharry Medical College School of Dentistry. I was born and raised in Maryland, uh, shout out to the DMV, and uh, I attended the University of Maryland College Park. Graduated in 2018, um, I majored in public health science. And while I was at UMD, I was involved with uh, several different types of organizations. I was involved in a few cultural organizations such as the um, Caribbean Student Association, African Student Association, Black Student Union, etc. Um, I was also involved with some more like leadership and advancement organizations such as the Student Success Leadership Council, um, Student Empowerment Project, and I was also a uh, part of more like pre-health type of organizations such as the Charles R. Drew Pre-Health Society as well as Global Dental Brigades. Um, and Global Dental Brigades is an organization that um, I was able to like be a, a part of. And through this organization, I went to Honduras for a dental mission trip, which was a very great experience, very profound experience. So highly recommend if uh, your school offers Global Dental Brigades. A um, little bit of just fun facts about me, I would say uh, hobbies. I am really into music. Um, Fun fact is I can play uh, four instruments, so guitar, uh, piano, bass guitar, and ukulele. I taught myself in eighth grade. Um, but outside of this, just that, um, I would say that I really enjoy just like relaxing, of course. Um, I enjoy kind of learning new things, trying different foods, um, and really just going out and exploring to see what all is out there uh, for the world to offer. I always love telling the story because I feel like it's not the typical, um, oh, you know, I've known I want to be a dentist since I was in like kindergarten or, oh, I've known that I want to be a dentist like my whole entire life. That's not the case for me. Um, I didn't decide that I wanted to be a dentist until, uh, what was it, my winter break of my sophomore year of college. And what had happened was, you know, I started off college on the pre-med track as a general biology major with the intention of uh, going to medical school. And, you know, like many other students have, will admit, I started off college knowing I wanted to be a doctor. So I said, okay, I'll do pre-med and I'll do gen bio. I was good in biology in high school, so that's gonna be my major. And about halfway through college, I ended up switching over to public health. But when it came to switching from pre-med to pre-dent, I got to the point where I was looking at the other pre-med students and I felt that they all had something that I didn't have. And it was the passion for medicine. It was the genuine desire to be a medical doctor. And I had to be honest with myself. I said, Malik, you don't really want to be a medical doctor. You know you want to be in healthcare, but do you really want to be a medical doctor or physician? And it wasn't until my good friend Alicia, and she was on this channel before, she's currently in um, orthodontic residency, and back then in college, she would always try and convince me to switch over <laughs> to pre-dent, and I'm not going to lie, I thought the concept of it was a little bit strange, uh, being a dentist and like w like working in someone's mouth all day, but a larger part of it was that, you know, being in being on a pre-dental track and becoming a dentist that was never a part of my original plan so i was a little bit um hesitant at first but after a while you know i said you know let me at least check it out let me give it a shot so i did some research about uh dentistry i shadowed i watched videos i talked to people and over time it felt like that passion that was lacking with medicine i found in dentistry and when it comes to just the profession of dentistry, the biggest thing that um, I would say attracted me to the profession and like really pushed me to switch over from pre-med to pre-dent, and this is gonna sound very cliche, but it was just simply the concept or the thought of being able to impact a person's life through their smile. That in itself was enough for me to say, okay, you know what, Malik? This is it. This is the route that you're supposed to go. Well, the DAT, um, it feels like forever ago I took the exam, but I actually took the DAT twice. Um, both times I took it during the summer. 
So all I did while studying for the DAT was um, really just study. I didn't take any classes or I wasn't working during that time either, but going into the exam or going into studying for the exam, um, it was a little bit stressful because there were certain, uh, let's say topics on the exam like biology that I knew I wasn't strong in, um, mainly specifically with biology, just because of how vast it is. Um, it was a little bit intimidating because, you know, I didn't know, okay, will my exam be heavy on like ecology? Will it be heavy on like cell biology, like in, or something in between? So it was really hard to um, figure that out. But um, both times I used DAT bootcamp to study for the exam. And I felt like it was a very uh, thorough um, resource. I felt like it was a very helpful resource as well. And while using DET Bootcamp, they have a whole lot of just like different um, like practice exams and uh, they have a whole lot of videos. And I felt like that was that really helped me because I'm a really uh, like solid visual learner. Um, but when it comes to just tips for the DAT, the biggest tip that I can tell anyone is to take breaks. Right. Because for me, I studied approximately like for, I think, like two months. And um, let's say eight to four, eight to five, basically every day. Um, but it gets to the point where we all know, like we will be studying something forever, or like, let's say we're sitting down studying and you get to the point where you just hit that wall, you know, you can't study anymore and that's okay. You know, because your brain needs rest. I never really understood how people could say, oh, they studied for like, like 12 hours, you know, more power to them, but for me, I'm the type of student where I need to give my mind rest. So that's the biggest tip that I can give anyone who's approaching the DAT right now is to take breaks and to give yourself some rest. I made it very evident or I just made the point clear that I have a genuine passion to help others. Um, and as simple as that may sound, it goes a long way because I made it very clear that I ultimately want to be in a position where I want to serve underserved communities because, you know, as healthcare professionals, as dentists, doctors, um, whatever the case may be, or physicians, because, you know, dentists are doctors, but whatever the case may be, I uh, really feel to this day that it's really important to give back to others when you can. So I think in my, at the time when I was applying, I really wanted just to put the point across and show admissions committees the type of person that I am, that I really just want to help others. And that is really what it's all about, being in a position where you can give back and contribute to another person's well-being. That's what it really is all about, in my opinion, at least. Overall, my, I would say my interview day was relatively chill. Um, don't get me wrong, it was definitely still stressful at times, but so the way it worked for us is that, or for me, is that I got to Meharry's campus. Um, well, let me just backtrack. So it took me about two months or so to get um, an interview invite after I had applied because I applied and what was it? Summer, I want to say July of 2018, heard back regarding um, an interview in October because I interviewed in like November the following month. And during the day, it was nice because, you know, we received like different um, presentations and got uh, tours from current students at the time. But for me, I interviewed with two separate uh, faculty members. And I'm not sure how interviews work nowadays, especially with COVID, but at the time when interviews were in person, I interviewed uh, with two different faculty members at two different um, times of the day. and. After the interview, I felt a little bit unsure. I can't lie. I felt a little bit, you know, just like asking myself, oh, Malik, like, do you think they liked you? And, oh, Malik, maybe you shouldn't, you shouldn't have said this, that, and the third. Oh, what's going to happen? And uh, everything I was just trying to just, I, I tend to overthink a lot. So it's very on brand for me to have asked myself all those questions. But then I got to the point where I said, you know, Malik, it's over. And you did your part. Now leave the rest to God. And I did. And here I am. <laughs> The two biggest tips I can give for anyone who's about to have an interview for dental school is one, review your application, and two, be yourself. 
So when I say review your application, I say that because oftentimes whoever's interviewing you, they would have already like looked over your application. They might even have it pulled up in front of them on a computer or printed out. I'm saying that because that was the case for me with both of my interviewers. They had my entire application just like right in front of them and they were asking me questions directly from my application. So definitely be familiar with what you put in your application um, because you don't wanna you know, be caught like fumbling or like stuttering off of something that you wrote down and you said that you did. Um, but all that aside, the biggest thing that would help you in your interview is just to be yourself. Um, I say be yourself because if you get an interview, that's a good thing. A lot of these schools, they offer students interviews who they are interested in, who they want to see, okay, they know that you look good on paper, but who are you in real life? And if you get an interview, that's a great thing. So just go and be yourself, be your genuine self, and really just let the dental school, the admissions committee know that who you are on paper is great, but who you are in person is even better. So dental schools want to see someone who is, you know, kind, compassionate, funny, someone who they can see um, being a dentist because as a dentist, you have to have some type of like, you know, people skills and you can't just be someone who, you know, doesn't necessarily have that type of energy. So it's important to be yourself when you go to these interviews because the admissions committees, they really want to see, okay, this person is really cool on paper. They have great grades, great extracurriculars, but can I talk to them face to face? And can I see them as a successful dentist? So be yourself and relax. It's not meant to be scary. They really just wanna to get to know you more. Okay, so like I said, I'm a third year dental student right now at Meharry and oftentimes people have asked me, okay, Malik, like why Meharry? Why'd you choose Meharry? And again, going back to the cliche statements, um, I wouldn't say that I chose Meharry. I would say Meharry chose me. And the reason I say that is because back in 2017, 2018, when I first applied to dental schools, I applied to a total of five programs or five schools. And out of the five schools, Meharry is the only one that offered me an interview. I'll just you know be completely honest. I wasn't the strongest applicant from a academic standpoint. And I uh, know a lot of times schools just have like these different, uh, what are they called? Like, like cutoffs, like cutoff like requirements. So if you don't have a certain, let's say DAT score, like you're automatically not even being considered. Same thing with GPA. And I feel like what set Meharry apart from the rest of the schools that I applied to is they looked past that and they saw who I was outside of just you know the GPA or who I was outside of just like my DAT score they really saw okay yes he might have struggled here in these areas however who he's what he says he likes to do like the recommendations that he has his personal statement this is someone who we want to get to know a little bit more and then I got an interview and like I said here I am now as a third year student um, so I would say that's what really set Meharry apart or sets Meharry apart from other schools potentially is that, yes, it's important to, you know, have the grades and have the test scores. But at the end of the day, once you get into dental school, I promise you, no one is going to ask you, oh, what was your DAT? If they do ask you, it's just going to be in like, like very, very casual, just out of curiosity conversation, right? But when you get here, it really is about, okay, who are you? Like, and what can you contribute to the profession? And what type of person are you? And can you be a genuine caring dentist? And if you can answer those questions and you can answer them well, you're gonna be fine. You're gonna be fine. So don't let any type of cutoff score, weed out scores or anything like that ever make you feel like you will not be a good dentist because there's no correlation. 
Granted, I did a one-year master's program at Meharry between like college and starting in the actual dental program, but still it was an adjustment because in college, it's funny, like I think about college nowadays and I'm like, Malik, why were you stressed? <laughs> you know, why were you so like, oh my gosh, I have a lot going on. Don't get me wrong, in the moment, you know, it's like, wow, it's a lot. College is just a different type of like ballpark, but I mean, this is how it happens. The higher you get in terms of your education, things just tend to get a little bit more challenging and more difficult. Um, so when I started my master's program, I was like, oh, I don't know, this is a lot going on, but especially dental school, you know, having eight to fives every day. And I was like, wow. So I was definitely overwhelmed um, often. And especially my first semester, because the first semester is a lot of just like basic science courses. So like biochem and microbio and neuroscience, etc. So I was really overwhelmed and imposter syndrome definitely hit me multiple times, like slapped me in the face. I can't even lie. And um, feeling like, okay, Malik, you're here. And it seems like everyone else around you is doing like just fine. So why aren't you, you know, like what's going on? Are you even sure that you can do this? You know, are all the people who said that you would never make it? Like, are they, or were they right kind of thing? And I was, again, an overthinker. That's who I am. But I, had to get to the point where I said, okay, Malik, like, take your time. Malik, you're here for a reason. And I just tried to, you know, start feeding my mind with more, um, let's call them positive thoughts and positive affirmations um, because it was rough, the transition from pre-dental to dental school. But after a while, I got into the flow of things and I found my like niche for sure. All right, so kind of going back to the first year experience. Um, so just a disclaimer, I was a part of the, what I like to um, call it the COVID class because I started dental school in 2020 and like really smack in the middle of the pandemic. So most of my courses were online my first year. And for example, I didn't get the luxury of having an in-person gross anatomy lab. So. Um, but it's all right i'm not mad at it but um i still took a many like basic science courses like i mentioned before so like you know the microbio and the neuroscience and the biochem gross anatomy but like virtually um so that was a little bit rough for me because i'm not the best learner through a screen i like to kind of be there and be present um but typically my day would start early i'm a morning bird i've always been a morning person so I would wake up usually around like 6 or 6.30 every morning and go sit at my computer, sit at my desk and just log in and watch class all day. Um, and as you can, I'm sure you could imagine, that was a lot. It was, it, even though it seems like it, or sounds like it might not be too much, um, it was still had stressful moments just being in isolation like that and being thrown all this information. So for me, what I found to kind of help me get through that is to take breaks and to do things for fun. And as I mentioned earlier, like I like to play music. So I have my guitar and I have my ukulele here. And I found myself, even to this day, I'll say, okay, Malik, let's take like a 10 minute study break and just like, you know, mess around with your guitar real quick. And I'll look at the time and it'll be like an hour past. But you know, it's fine because sometimes you need that. You can't, you know, go nonstop. You know, you really do have to make time for yourself sometimes, even with all the work that you're always going to have literally in dental school, um, you need to incorporate time for yourself or like what I like to call it time for you to wusa. So that's what I like to do. Um, and it's important just to have something for you and for your own like self care. So when I think about my time at Meharry, um, I've been here for about four years now, including the one year master's program that I did prior to starting dental school. Um, I have really enjoyed my time here. And I, a lot of times, like I've heard people say to me before jokingly, like, oh Malik, you sound like a spokesperson for Meharry, but that really isn't it. Um, I just genuinely feel a sense of like community here. Um, and for me, you know, when I did the master's program, I had the opportunity to like through the ad stats application apply to other programs as well. But I made the conscious decision to stay at Meharry because I was enjoying it so much here, you know, feeling the sense of belonging, 
feeling the family aspect, feeling that community, having professors who not only went to Meharry themselves, most of them, but also feeling like you can approach them, knowing that majority of them care, knowing that they just want to see you succeed. It's just, there's something about the Meharry experience that honestly, I don't know if it really exists in other schools, you know, no shade to any other programs, but for me, it's just like, people like to say, oh, the Meharry family, hashtag Meharry made. And I am very honored and grateful to say that I am Meharry made because being here at Meharry, it's just, I feel like it's allowed me just from a personal level to grow. I feel like being here at Meharry, I feel like I have developed in ways that I would not have developed if I had gone to school somewhere else. Um, Cause I mean, again, keeping it very honest and transparent with you, dental school is rough. You know, every day it's rough. The current time, I think it's like almost 1 a.m. Like, and I still have stuff to do, like it's rough. Um, so dental school, I can't say dental school isn't an, an enjoyable experience because I'm literally going through it like all the time. However, I'm so grateful and so happy that I'm doing dental school at Meharry, if that makes sense. So. Overall, to sum it up, the biggest thing that makes me excited about being at Meharry is just feeling like I belong. And I, I don't really know how else to say it. So speaking directly to all the pre-dental students out there, the biggest piece of advice that I would like to give you all right now, and I want you to hear me. The biggest thing that I want you to remember if you need to write it on your like wall or put it on your fridge or put it in your phone, I want you to love yourself. When I say love yourself, I mean the process of going through college as a pre-dental student with the stress and with the anxiety and when you start getting your interviews and just the courses that I know you all are taking and the extracurriculars that I know you all are getting involved with, it's a lot right? It's a lot. And for me, just I'm a big advocate for just self care and taking care of one's mental. So I just really encourage you all as you kind of embark on this journey through the rest of your college journey. And once you start dental school or whatever path you may go down, take care of yourself, do whatever you need to do for self care, enjoy yourself, don't let certain things get too much under your skin and just really tell yourself and be proud of yourself and know who you are and know what you are capable of doing because you're more than capable of being successful. If the path that you want to go down is dentistry, if you want to pursue this, that, and the third, you can do it. You just have to like tell yourself and believe that you can do it. So I just really encourage whoever's watching this, pre-dental or not, to love yourself, feed your mind with positive thoughts. And honestly, it sounds very, again, cliche, but it will go a long way, trust me. So I hope that you enjoyed everything that I had to say. Um, big shout out to Future DDS. Thank you for having me on your channel. Um, if anyone ever wants to reach out to me, you can find me on Instagram at Chasing Dr. Leaks. That's L E E K S. Leaks is that's like my most common nickname. Um, you can also email me if you ever have any questions. Um, my email is mwalters025 at gmail.com. So, yeah, thank you all for joining. Thank you for listening to me. And I hope that you have a great rest of your day.